Thank you, everyone. So we'll take a moment to dip into our bodies and be fully present here now. So could everybody close your eyes? Take some deep breaths into your lungs and sense how this oxygen is mingling with the blood in your heart and then going down through your vascular system of rivers and streams, through your abdomen, thighs, calves, into your feet and all 10 toes. Exhaling out the carbon dioxide and spent chi. Breathing again into your lungs. Feeling that oxygen and fresh chi nourish the blood in your heart and moving up over and through your shoulders, down your arms, into all 10 fingers. Breathing this nutrients up to your brain. Releasing the fatigue from today and letting all the cells of your brain feel this fresh oxygen and chi. Now relax your breathing and focus and just give thanks to your body. Gratitude for this amazing living temple of your soul. And whatever symptoms may be going on, you are alive and you are here. Now open your eyes. I'm Soleil Rose. My core intention in life is to bring for myself and everyone I work with our spiritual energies into union with our cellular consciousness, paving the way to move beyond Homo sapien towards the next enlightened next species. Tonight I will offer you the experience of going through the three main layers of the heart chakra so that you can have a more direct experience of this spiritual to cellular connection. And if this resonates for you, you can add this to your evolutionary toolbox. First, I'm going to be sharing some science, metaphysics, and case studies of why the layers of the heart process has become the foundation of all the work I do. So what is it? The layers of the heart. This is representing the sternum on this uh, my left side. So at the sternum are held our more surface emotions, heart emotions, sometimes grief. And then as we travel in and behind that, we're going into the region that's uh, in the same line as the physical heart, but we're actually going into the subtle physical, and we're going into the spiritual heart. And we'll take a few moments there to bathe in your pure essence, your unique light energy, your embodied soul. And then we're going to keep going 
behind the physical heart, still in the body, we're going to the third layer, which is where the cosmic energies, the divine energies, are coming into the back, into the heart chakra. But our bodies actually translate this, and that's where we're going, is to just in front of the spine where these energies are coming in. So some people see these as, well, some see it as pure light, like it shows here, but as uh, a misty cloud that feels like all and nothing simultaneously. And some people see it as the vast night sky. And everyone here is unique, and you may see something completely other and feel it in a different way. So for decades, I was looking for a way to bring clients, soul, and cell consciousness together. So one day in 1998, I was working with a pregnant woman, and all of a sudden I felt stuck, and I didn't know what to do. So I asked my guides, what do I do? <laughs> and almost simultaneously, as they were showing me, I was directing her. And I directed her through this whole layers of the, proce layers of the heart process. And this was so healing for her that I started using it with other clients and then I was teaching it in workshops and eventually took it to whole conference audiences. So to date, it's been given to people from over 30 nationalities and proved that it is universally applicable basically works for everyone. While the layers of the heart is the foundation of my work, the arose process includes much more and could be called a spiritual evolutionary somatic therapy. I love working with people because it gives me the greatest hope for humanity. And I learn from everyone and I experience these inner gems, which is the whole variety of the divine. So it's very wonderful for me. Typically, Somatic therapy involves finding and healing held traumas in the body through using the breath and a variety of modalities, which is very important in the arose process, and finding these dissociated parts and hidden and lost talents, and bringing those back into center for a full integration. I'm going to give you an example in a few moments, but a little more intro. We are all opening to higher, wider, and deeper consciousness, which will begin to shift how our bodies operate. But let us imagine an ancient monkey who opened to higher consciousness and had a vision of the Sydney Opera House. <laughs> and be a prophet for his troop. <laughs> but he wouldn't have the biology 
to manifest this great vision. Just to say that evolution is physical as well as spiritual. This is where we are now. <laughs> it seems that everyone is channeling light, higher consciousness, meeting extraterrestrials, <laughs> and having visions. Even some visionaries have seen crystalline cities in the subtle physical. But we need greater, different, new physical capacities to actually manifest these visions. Becoming a cyborg or relying on AI won't actually help in this regard. Our brains have a fantastic neural network and yet remain carpent. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Compartmentalized, thank you. Still need each other. <laughs> so, imagine you're watching the evening news. This cerebellum might get triggered and you start feeling this fight, flight, or freeze responses. Well, the prefrontal lobes, they're there in the blue, called our angel lobes, are wanting to keep the deep peace and the trust in the divine and our connection with the all. I feel that this is one of the areas that we will begin to see organic natural changes in the brain in the not too distant future. but I'm gonna stick with what we can do tonight. <laughs> there are two important aspects of our body. One is body consciousness, which holds different kinds of energies in different areas. And the other is cellular consciousness into the nitty gritty of what the cells are doing to keep us alive every day. How many people here have done some form of somatic therapy where you felt into a part of your body and you may have, great, you may have found traumas from childhood or past lives, or even lives on other planets that are holding energy. It's the body consciousness which carries the unfinished or karmic life lessons and is waiting for you to become conscious and complete these episodes using love, compassion, wisdom, and then reuniting these former selves into your present being. Clearing the body consciousness at a certain place will clear the epigenetic field at that location. You see these pink dots here. They're over the genes, so they're not inside of the genetic material. They're on top of it. And as you can see from the other diagram, there's a huge amount of things that can affect the epigenetics of our genes, including the psychological, social, financial, and spiritual. So 
when an epigenetic factor is sitting there, it can diminish or interfere completely with that gene's expression. So when we clear this, we're clearing it at that place. And just doing that part of it can bring a much greater healing, sense of freedom, and self-integration. This is a scientific view which is completely valid. And we're sitting here in the metaphysical library. So we need to look at our aura, our subtle fields, and how that's affecting the epigenetics. Sri Aurobindo and the mother were pioneers in applying higher states of consciousness to transform the physical body. So different spiritual systems have different views of the aura and this is Sri Aurobindo's. So this is quite detailed. Um, <laughs> there's a lot there. <laughs> Every one of us sitting right here is holding all these fields. So this room is much fuller than it looks. <laughs> and then there's all these levels of consciousness above the normal. Near, just under spirit, you'll see supramental, overmental. I'm going to be referring to the supramental gold in a few minutes. So just notice how high up that is. So what I am loosely calling the body consciousness is what Sri Aurobindo is calling the subtle physical, this blue area here. The easiest way to think about this is a rainbow. So if our body is the red, then the subtle physical is the gold, and then it goes all the way out to the etheric levels. As you notice, it's actually a continuum. So in fact, we feel and sense things from those far out fields, just the way like animals do, dogs do, is they can sense earthquakes coming. And I think everyone in this room probably senses when we're having a solar flare. And <laughs> uh, so we are sensing all the way out there. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example of everything I've been talking about from a person I worked with this summer who's graciously giving me permission to share her sessions with you. In my arose process, we always start with a general grounding, then do a short version of the layers of the heart, and then go to a part of the body that needs attention. The first time Barbara came to see me, both of her hands were hurting. Barbara has been a wonderful green water engineer for the last 40 years and has designed whole buildings for businesses and residential. So she's been using her hands and the mouse and the computer for 40 years designing these great systems. The first time she came, we went through the process and we worked with each hand and each hand held a different past life and each hand was happy to come back. I mean, the, the past life that was there came back into her soul center, and that was very satisfying. When Barbara came back a month later, 
Her left hand was fine, and her right hand was mostly fine, except the fourth finger, which was in a lot of pain. And Barbara couldn't use her computer mouse. We did a short grounding, and then I asked Barbara to put her hand on the sternum. We went into the region of the physical heart, but went into this subtle physical. And Barbara felt into her spiritual center and felt so much love. It was so sweet and soft, and an image of a deep pink rose appeared. Then I asked Barbara to breathe behind her physical heart, yet in front of her spine. Here were dense energies, all related to her re professional responsibilities and her home projects. So I asked her, would these energies consider taking a one-hour vacation? Still inside, in that back region, she saw an image of a smaller self with both hands out reach, reaching out, wanting to receive this opalescent mist. Since she was already there, I said, well, can your physical hands receive that opalescent energy? So she breathed into her hands, and nine fingers could feel that opalescent energy. Everything except that fourth finger on the right side, which was still in pain. So I asked Barbara to breathe in and go into the Akashic field of this finger. I said, when was the very first time that this kind of sensation was in a, in a body that you had? And she went way back, more than 100,000 years ago, before the time of tools in Southeast Africa. And she saw herself pushing this big boulder, and it was too big and too hard, and it was straining her hands. So she matter-of-factly went and got another boulder, but it took months in that lifetime for her hands to heal. And her tribe was building a wall, an enclosure, to protect themselves from the wild animals. And as Barbara felt into this former self, she realized that her whole clan had come from a different star system. And they felt that Mother Earth was very receptive and happy to have them there. And they were happy to experience being in a denser body. Barbara, that they all had direct connection with each other, with plants, with animals, and even with the stars. So I asked Barbara if this personality, this former self, was ready to leave, please leave, that fourth finger and come down with her present consciousness into her spiritual heart. Finally, I instructed Barbara to revisit that fourth finger. Since we had cleared the epigenetic field that was over, then we could go directly to the cellular consciousness. And we could ask, what else does this finger need or want so it's willing to 100% heal? And the finger <clears throat> wanted protection with an herbal saturated mitten and no computer mouse work until it was 100% better. So Barbara agreed to this. 
And that was the conclusion then. I happened to run into Barbara at Lithia Park about a month after this, and she said her fourth finger was much better and she could begin using the computer mouse again. <laughs> to reiterate, the past lives or former traumas are held in the magnetic field of the subtle physical body, which, which is penetrating into the physical. You have to resolve and clear this level before going directly to the cellular consciousness for additional healing of physical symptoms. Along the way, gifts and capacities from the past are integrated back into your soul center. This process brings a greater sense of wholeness, wellness, freedom, and soul to cell flow. So, Meg, could you just go over the difference between the body, the body consciousness and cell conscious, cellular consciousness? Okay, I'm supposed to take all, all questions at the end, but I will. <laughs> It's okay. So the body consciousness is actually our subtle physical energy, which actually you do find it inside the body. It penetrates to the inside of the body. But this is a magnetic field. Um, that's why we might find a trauma up here, but not down there. You know, it's held in certain places. That body consciousness is affecting the epigenetics. So what's sitting over the genes. So you're not getting your full gene expression if there's stuff sitting over it. So that layer is cleared. So then imagine there's nothing over the genes, but there's still a physical symptom. Then you're going right into the little cell. And you're saying, okay, what do you need? <laughs> you know, how, what else do you, what do you need? And it will tell you exactly what it needs. <laughs> so it's willing to heal. So that's the differentiation I'm making. You got it? Okay. In my work, I insist I'm going through the heart center first because the cells trust and know that they are physically alive because of the heart and the soul. So why do I insist on this? What most people I've worked with discover at some point is a life where they were, leave, learn, they were living their spiritual truth. They were a healer, a saint, felt oneness, the great spirit, an almighty divine. And yet, they were persecuted, tortured, <clears throat> burned at the stake. This in itself provides great motivation for wanting to evolve beyond such a humanity. What this did to the cells was leave an imprint that higher light could be dangerous. But when you go through the heart center, they don't feel that because the cells feel that connection. Whereas that might feel like a divine that's not embodied and it got them in trouble at one time or another. So what about all the people who are channeling through the seventh chakra and aren't doing some kind of physical somatic therapy? I mean, they might be doing some other kind of physical process in themselves. But what about those who aren't? They may be perfectly fine. 
and there's a few things that may happen. First is the body might start forming negative symptoms because it's going, <laughs> hey, what about me? <laughs> Second, it's easy to go into flight and to light and have all these beautiful, wonderful experiences but then go into denial about everything else that's still left to change. And third, it's possible to go in a light powered overload and have serious spiritual emergencies. Imagine you are driving on a windy oceanfront road seeing the most beautiful sunset of your life and you turn a corner and you're looking straight into the golden sun and you can't see anything else including the oncoming traffic dangerous for you and everyone else that's the spiritual emergency you can't see anything else it doesn't mean it went away <laughs> In 2002, I worked with a very advanced healer who was in such a spiritual emergency. He was having golden light pouring through his body and he couldn't move for hours at a time. And this made it very difficult for him to work. So when I was working with him, I noticed that his embodied soul was halfway out his back. And I said, uh, can I have your permission to pull this back into your body? <laughs> and he gave me that permission. And after that, he learned how to handle these downloads. I knew all about golden light in 2002 from my own spiritual emergency six years before then. The story of how I met the mother of the Sherbindo Ashram when I was a teenager and how that opened my spiritual life. I'm going to be sharing in a podcast in December and you're all invited to join and I have a sign up sheet if you want to leave your email and I'll let you know when that's happening and just to say that in 1971 when I was 16 I knew nothing at all about spiritual to physical evolution but as writings about the mother's yoga in her own body came out. I learned about this supermental golden descent that she experienced in 1956, but it came down for the entire earth. And this transformative energy has since then been infiltrating the entire earth to bring all of us, the entire earth, not just humans, all of us to our next stage in evolution. The mother was so very, very far beyond anything in my known universe that I really wanted to know how she got there. So fast forwarding through my spiritual practice from ages 16 to 41, during which time I had loads of spiritual experiences. And as a massage therapist, I felt many different <clears throat> energies in people and realized I was quite empathic. In 1996, of 41, I went with my family <coughs> to Oroville in South India. That top picture is the center meditation area of Oroville, the world's largest 
uh, crystal globe is inside of that golden globe, that meditation chamber. And Aurevillians have been afforesting what was a red plateau for many years. So there's over 3 million trees there now. <clears throat> so that's the area where we were. One day I was alone in 1996. The rest of my family was out. And I was reading an account of the mother's experience as she was going through her own transformations. And I started feeling this very intense spiritual energy coming down. It felt wonderful. And then I thought, well, I'll go out for a jog and I'll ground this. So I headed out to the Pachandi Kolam jungle. And usually after meditation, and I get up, it, it things start dissipating. But this did not. With eyes open and running, this energy started getting stronger and stronger. And I saw this golden rain coming down. And my heart center was going, this is it, this is it. But it didn't stop at my top of my head. And this golden light started coming through my body. And I could see where it was getting through. And I could see where there were dark, hard lumps in my brain and in my body. And this energy wasn't getting through. And it was getting more and more intense. So my heart center was ecstatic. And my body started to panic. And I'm going, oh my god, it was too much. And, and then I felt like I was going to explode. And I remembered a story about a Cambodian monk who went into spontaneous combustion, and, and I got it. I knew, I knew what that was. I knew how that could happen. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to dissipate this energy. There was nowhere to go. And all of a sudden, I heard a quiet voice in my heart saying, just keep running. <laughs> and after a few moments, it started to dissipate. But I was thoroughly shaken. I experienced something I had wanted to experience my whole life. But my body wasn't ready. And then I laughed out loud. And I went, how can people think that they are in charge of evolution? <laughs> I said, the divine has decided. And these energies are powerful. We will adapt. Or what? We will adapt. We in this room will adapt. <laughs> For sure. In the days and years that followed, I learned to open fully through my heart center, which is safe. The cells like it. <laughs> And then, when the heart center is open, more or less, all the time, then it's safe for these higher energies to come in. Now, when my body and cells, when they feel golden light, they love it. And it's, it's coming in much more gently. So, that's the introduction. In summary, we are all evolving and need to evolve. There are safe, wonder-filled ways to do this and precarious ways. Layers of the heart provides a reliable foundation 
for a flow between spiritual and cellular consciousness, increasing well-being and expanding oneself while evolving at the body's optimal rate. Okay, now we get to do it. So, I'd like to take a moment and have everybody just stand up straight where you are and just stretch your hands up a little and feel that oxygen and fresh chi moving around. Okay. So now we're going to experience the layers of the heart. In this process, and I'm going to ask you to stay in your witness self. So at the sternum, there can be all kinds of different emotions. So I want you to just notice them. If there's something really strong that's up, tell this place that you'll come back, that you've noticed, you will attend to them, and see if you get permission to continue. And we'll ask for permission at each level. So, take one or both hands and put it on your sternum. Close your eyes. Begin breathing down to your sternum. Start feeling the movement with your breath. Bringing 100% of your consciousness to the sternum area. Simply notice any emotions here, any feelings. Let your feeling self know that you've noticed what's here. Ask for permission to continue knowing that you will come back to your sternum. Now with your breath and your full consciousness Breathe behind the sternum bone. Start breathing in to the very center of your chest. The level with your physical heart, but you're going into the subtle physical, into your spiritual heart. into your unique, pure essence. Breathing in to your soul being. Notice if there's any light, any colors. Breathing in to your pure essential self. Notice if it feels like home. Breathing fully in, going right inside. 
notice any other qualities here. Does it feel peaceful? Breathing in fully right inside. Does it feel safe here? Breathing in fully. Tell this place that you're going deeper and that you will come back. Ask for permission to breathe behind your physical heart. Breathing into that space, a little space behind the physical heart and in front of your spine. Breathing in and begin exploring in the subtle physical still within your body. Breathing into the subtle physical and notice what's here. Breathing in from whatever position you feel safe inside, simply notice what are the qualities here? Are there any colors? Notice if there's any qualities right here in front of your spine that are feeling into the subtle physical. Are there any energies or qualities here which feel good or supportive? Any feelings that you would like to feel in your everyday consciousness? Begin asking any of these qualities which feel good or supportive to begin moving back forward from in front of your spine moving towards your unique spiritual heart. Breathe the qualities which feel supportive. The qualities which feel nourishing. Breathe these to your pure essential self energies in the very center of your chest. 
as the supportive energies from behind come to the center of your chest, notice if there's any change in your unique soul energies, any expansion in the radiance, any change in the colors or luminosity here. Breathe in with any of these enhanced qualities. Breathing into your pure essence and begin breathing forward. Asking as much of your pure essence to come forward with your breath as feels good, as feels good right now. Breathing your pure essential energies to your sternum bone. Breathing fully into your sternum bone. And now notice if any of the feelings, emotions, or your breath feel different now that you're back at your sternum. Take a couple of, or a minute, just feeling that whole space, that whole journey, sternum to soul to behind and back through. And now relax your attention and take your hands and just put a gentle rub on your thighs. Start feeling yourself back in this room. Take a breath down to the bottom of your feet. And very slowly start opening your eyes. And then keep half of your attention inside and just half of your attention into the room. It's kind of that Buddhist eyes. So you're kind of half open as you're coming back here. Well, I, I think we did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs>